Welcome to Finances Do Matter. My name is Richard and today it's rather dark and dank outside. Rather depressing really. Quite similar to the UK economy because the headlines today are not good. But amongst every cloud there is a silver lining. And amongst our state of economic depression there are those few potentialities that may make us wealthy one day. Let's take a look to see how realistic these opportunities really are. Unloved UK stocks held back by extreme pessimism. Bank of England's Bailey, that's the governor, pushes back against raising the central bank's 2% target as he's under pressure to actually raise it because the likelihood of the UK reaching 2% inflation is pretty dismal, certainly in the next year or two. Yields on most gilts are higher after 10-year rates climbed last week to the highest since 2008. The pound trades above $1.28 but hovers near the day's lows. The FTSE 100 index set for the sixth straight day of losses. We'll take a look at that in a moment with BT, normally or formerly known as British Telecom, among the underperformers, and UK house prices to fall 10% from last year's peak, and an even steeper drop is likely later this year. Okay, so we've seen the main news headlines, house prices to fall by 10% and even more by the end of the year. The Bank of England governor is saying, I'm sticking to 2% inflation rate target, which suggests that interest rates may still have to go up, especially with our inflation rate at around 8.7%, and the inflation rate in America hovering somewhere between 45 and 5 So we have further to go. But of course, the, our equity market, the FTSE 100 index, which is the index of the top 100 stocks by capitalization, is doing abysmally. Year on year, we've seen, and I've shown in yesterday's video and in previous videos, I've shown that on average, most markets have risen by about 20%, or certainly between 15 and 20%. But unfortunately, the FTSE 100 index has risen by less than 1% over the last 12 months. So we're all aware that that when, I think Warren Buffett once said, there is blood in the streets, that is the time to start buying your stocks. So let's take a look at at least what Bloomberg is suggesting we consider. Here are a few stocks Bloomberg will be keeping an eye on in London this morning. BT, the telecoms group, said CEO Philip Janssen has informed the board he plans to step down from the role in the next 12 months having been in the position since 2019. Janssen, or successor, will have to grapple with a share price that's fallen by almost 50% since he took over. Unite Group, the student accommodation developer, said it is more optimistic on delivering rental growth in the coming academic year. Future, the magazine publishing firm, is planning a £45 million share buyback that undoubtedly will have a positive impact on the shares. So there are three share opportunities to consider, but I personally would dig a little deeper because Morgan Stanley is of the opinion that once we see inflation potentially coming down, and they seem moderately convinced that this will happen, and I think at the end of the day by raising or continuing to raise rates at the rate the various central banks are doing, and restricting the level of credit as well. It's not just the one tool that they're using to combat inflation. And if, let's hope, one day they sort out the oil price, then yes, inflation will come down. But Morgan Stanley has its own suggestion, which is to perhaps look at the stocks in the 250 index rather than the FTSE 100. Let's look at that for a second. Maybe the UK's dirt cheap markets are too gloomy. The team over at Morgan Stanley say extreme pessimism around the economy could flip around in the coming months. If we get better news out of the UK on inflation and other metrics, Morgan Stanley recommends looking at domestic stocks 
that is FTSE 250 over the FTSE 100. The former tends to do better when consumers in Britain feel more confident. There's been a wide gap in the last two years. And as you can see, the FTSE 250 here has performed extremely badly, while the FTSE 100 index, although it's not done well and is only marginally in positive territory, the difference between the two is considerable. Now, just to recap and perhaps bring us all up to date, the FTSE 100 index are the top 100 stocks registered on the London Stock Exchange by capitalization. The 250 index are the next 250 stocks by capitalization. Now, to compare the stocks in each one, or at least the leading stocks, I have a little bit of a list. I'm not going to run through a huge number, but maybe 10 in each one. For example, in the FTSE 100 index, we have AstraZeneca, Unilever, HSBC Holdings, of course, that's the bank, or Diageo, GlaxoSmithKline Beecham, British American Tobacco, tobacco company still up there, BP, British Petroleum, that is, Royal Dutch Shell, Rio Tinto, and Reckitt Benkiser. But then in the 250 index, we got Centrica, Tritax, or Tritax, Unite Group, Harbour Energy, Convertech, EasyJet, FNC Investment, Weir Group, RIT Capital Partners, and TUI. And of course, there are 240 more. So basically, the indices have varied. And I think if I were looking for stock pickers, I would tend to adopt a more contrarian point of view. And this isn't investment advice. This is just what I would do. And look at what's performed badly. Why has it performed badly? If it's performed badly, obviously, because the company itself is no good, that's a different matter. But if it's just performed badly because the sector is out of favour at the moment, or perhaps, as does happen from time to time, we find that the markets overlook a sector because it's focusing on perhaps the leading companies. And you find this in America particularly, where everyone is looking at Apple and Microsoft and, of course, Warren Buffett's organisation. And then a lot of companies are ignored. I remember back in my major investment days, GE and GE Capital were the prominent companies that we were all following and using as the benchmark against which everyone else was measured. While things are going badly, opportunities are created. And what we need to do as either potential investors or even analysts is have a look at who's performed perhaps the worst in these markets, identify the reason for that underperformance, and providing it's not, shall we say, ingrained in the company, but is just because the sector as a whole is out of favour, then that is the starting point upon which we can then at least make an assessment as to potential pots of gold at the end of the rainbow. Thank you for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. I'll give a few more tips on what to do and how to do it in terms of the world of investment. So stay tuned and look out for future videos. See you soon.